Hey, welcome to our Bible study today. I'm glad you're with me. We're going to be in Psalm 7 uh, as we're going through the Psalms one by one. Probably won't cover this whole Psalm today, but we're going to start. Um, when David was persecuted and when he was attacked, he was motivated to examine his, his life for sin. And he called upon God to deliver him, but he's checking his, his own life also. And he says, save me, save me. Listen to verse one. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me. Now David is having some personal enemies here and they're accusing him of some incredible things, some terrible things. And David called upon the Lord. He said, oh Lord, my God, I put my trust in you. He placed himself in God's hands and and since God was his protection, since God was his defense, then in God's hands was the place to be. And he cried out to God. He said, save and, and deliver me from all these people that are coming after me. He knew that these people threatening him, they wanted to do him bodily injury. They wanted to really mess him up. And God alone, he knew that God alone had the ability to save him. Verse two, lest they tear me like a lion rending me in pieces while there is none to deliver. So he's knowing that if God did not rescue him, there would be no deliverance from this attack. Then he begins to think about himself and his sin. He said, oh Lord, in verse three, my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me or have plundered my enemy without cause. So David's going to search his, his own heart. David prayed. He said, if there's guilt, if I've done things, if I've been, if I've wronged people, um, he was referring to the sins that they were accusing him of. Uh, they were saying things about him. Uh, this guilt was a, was a stain and, and if it was true, it would, it would hinder his life. And, and if he committed these things as charged, he wouldn't be useful anymore in God's kingdom. And he didn't, he was so upset about this. And David, David continued, if I have done evil to him who is at peace with me or without cause have robbed my foe. And from this proceeds a general idea of the slanderous charges being brought against the character of David. He was being falsely accused of stealing from, from innocent people. Now, I just want to stop here for a moment. And I just kind of want to bring it home for us a little bit. Uh, I know that there are times when this, this psalm will fit right in where we are, that maybe we have been doing the right things. Maybe we've been doing as God has commanded us and, and we're, we're trying to live for him the best way that we can and walking and, and confessing our sins and moving on with him and having fellowship with him and people are accusing us of things that are wrong and and uh, that's what was happening with 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 David here and so he was laying himself bare before the Lord and saying if I've sinned if I've done these things then I deserve judgment and and so forth but let me let me just say how I'm and I don't I know that's true at times and when that happens we need to walk in everything that David's saying here. We need to trust him. We need to let God, you know, check us out and then take care of our enemies. But let me look at it this a little different way as from a New Testament side of this. Um, who's our real enemy? It's the devil himself, Satan. He goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so what he does is he comes and he accuses us in a couple of ways. The Bible says he's continually before the throne of God, accusing the brethren. That's me and that's you. He's continually continually before the Father, accusing us. And then he's accusing us to us. And there are those times that I go through such a, such a pain, such painful experiences when all of a sudden, um, everything that, that Jesus has forgiven me of, all the things in my past, things I did, 
things I pursued, decisions I made, people I hurt. Um, and it goes on and on and on. And and I, and all of a sudden I'm crying out to God and and all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm saying, yes, I did that. And I, I knew I did that. And I know I did that. And, and I, I go to God and say, God, I, I'm sorry I did this. And the Lord says, it's forgiven, Chuck. It's already been forgiven. You know that. But at those times, many times, it's really hard for me to, to embrace that forgiveness um, in, in, my, in my depths of my heart. I, I know I'm forgiven because the blood of Jesus was enough. It was the blood of God himself for me. Jesus cried out to the Father, it's finished. Dad is finished for Chuck Hoy. He's forgiven. My blood is shed for him. And his guilt, his sin is washed away. And my heart knows that. And I, I walk in that. But sometimes my mind, sometimes as, as the enemy throws these attacks, um, I begin to wonder. And I go back to God and I cry and I confess and you know, and we hear, hear David. And so kind of if you're, as you're listening here, think of it in, in a couple of ways. Think of, we'll go back to both of them. Think of it as maybe there's some people pursuing you with falsities, with lies, trying to destroy you, your ministry, your family, whatever it is, your reputation. And you know that you're not guilty and just pray the prayers of David and, and let him handle it. But also think of it as, if you're with me at times, and maybe you're in a time like that now, or maybe you will be soon or whatever, but all of a sudden, everything's being brought up into your mind. <clears throat> you failed here, you failed there. You weren't the dad you should have been. You weren't the husband, the wife. You weren't the, the father, the mother. Um, you, you, you said things, you went places, you made decisions, you offended, you hurt, you destroyed. And all of these things that we did as before Jesus came into our lives and and uh, even after, you know, there are things the enemy throws up, but that's, I'm taking that to the Lord too. So just think of both of those things as we look at some more of this Psalm, okay? Look at verse five. Let the enemy pursue me and overtake me. Yes, let him trample my life to the earth and lay my honor in the dust. So David's saying, if the honors, if, if, if their charges are true, if what they're saying is absolutely accurate, David reasoned, then may God's discipline come upon me, let my enemy pursue me, overtake me. You know, it's if what they're saying. So this is a time when you know you're doing right and people are accusing you. He was, he, he, he was not claiming sinlessness. David knew better than that. But he was claiming blamelessness, I, stating that He's not guilty as charged by his accusers. Now think about it. When we're accused of, of things from the past or whatever, we're not saying we're, 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 we're blameless. We're saying or we're sinless. No, we're saying we're blameless because it's under the blood of Jesus. If the accusations were true, then, then let David's chief rival trample his life to the ground and make him sleep in dust. That's what David's praying. In other words, if the slanderous charges are true, David was willing for his enemies to succeed in their personal attack, even to the point of taking his life. But if it was not true, he maintained he was innocent. Now that's where you need to be in those situations. But now think of another situation. When the enemies bring in these false accusations and these lies, you can claim the blood of Jesus you can stand at the cross and proclaim the freedom that you have and the deliverance that you have. And it's not true. The accusations are not true. And if you're being falsely accused, you know, from, from people in your life, and if it's not true, you can stand blameless before the throne of God. Look at verse six. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. Rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded, having affirmed his blamelessness. <laughs> now we affirm our blamelessness. We, you know, we, 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 we had sin, but we're not going to be blamed for it because you took it on the cross, Jesus. David appealed, arise, O Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. He called upon God who seemed to be unconcerned about this matter matter to rally to his defense. It's 
God, I'm, I'm crying out to you and you're doing nothing and, and I don't feel anything. There's those times in our lives when we're praying, it, it is so heavy on us and, and, and we, we, we can't hear him and he's not saying anything. And it's those times that by faith, we need to trust and believe that we are forgiven and that we are cleansed and that we are free and we are not guilty by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Sometimes we just want that confirmation. And so David cried out like God was asleep. And he said, awake, my God, decree justice here. He's urging the Lord to carry out justice by punishing evil and defending good. Verse eight, so the congregation of the people shall surround you for their, for their sakes. Therefore, return on high. The Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. Now picture, a, he's picturing a, a public judgment scene here. And David pleaded, let the assembled peoples gather around you. Then he implored the judge of heaven and earth to rule over them from on high. He was totally content to rest in God's verdict. Speaking to his own heart, he, he affirmed, let the Lord judge the peoples, believing God's judgment would be fair and totally accurate. And in a final examination of his own life, David put his conscience under the scrutiny of God. Judge me according to my righteousness. I don't pray that. New Testament, I pray, judge me according to your righteousness because it's no longer anything to do with my righteousness, but it's the righteousness of God. But such an unconditional acceptance of God's verdict initiated the second search of David's heart. And we need that kind of assurance. He was so assured that he was okay. Look at my righteousness. I need to be so assured. I'm okay. Flee from me, Satan. Get away from my life. I'm okay. I'm so, I'm, I'm secure in that. Verse nine, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. By addressing God as, as righteous God, who searches minds and hearts, David knew the Lord would judge right, right, rightly. He's not gonna make a mistake. He hasn't made a mistake in forgiving you. No, he's forgiven you. You're washed clean. You who were scarlet is now white as snow, he says. David's call for justice was bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. Or in other words, punish evil, my enemies, and protect good myself, me. <laughs> he knew God would confirm his righteousness before his, appoint, uh, his opponents. Maybe we need to declare the same thing at times. Verse 10 and 11, my defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. God is a just God. He's a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. So shifting to a battle scene now. David described God as a victorious warrior. The Lord would deflect all fiery darts and, and, and false accusations hurled against him. He would take care of it. He would protect his servants who were upright in heart. This righteous judge was not just sitting in a courtroom setting. He was handing down the verdicts of his court. He wasn't waiting until the final judgment. He was expressing his wrath every single day. Verse 12 and 13, he does not turn back. He will sharpen his sword. He bends his bow and makes it ready. He also prepares for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows into fiery shafts. In his display of vengeance, God would not relent or be turned back from pursuing wrath, but he sharpened his sword and ready his, his bow with flaming arrows. All his deadly weapons were prepared, poised, and pointed at the enemies of his chosen ones. God's in a constant state of war against his enemies. One day we're gonna see that. It's gonna be a battle and he will be victorious over all evil. Wow, just think of it. 
verse 14. Behold, the wicked brings forth iniquity. Yes, he conceives trouble and brings forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out, and he's fallen into the ditch which he made. His trouble shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down on his own crown. So David next, what he did is he kind of profiled the enemy who was the object of God's deadly aim. The enemy conceived much evil and, and trouble, but this would lead to his own uh, disillusionment. <laughs> he would dig a hole intending to capture a wild animal, only to fall into his own destruction. Whatever, whatever evil action he took, it would recoil on himself. We're going to see that one day. <laughs> wow. He's going to be thrown in a pit forever. Verse 17, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. So in response to God's strong defense of, of the godly, David determined that he would give thanks to the Lord because his righteousness was judging his enemies and defending his innocence. God, give thanks. What does it matter? that men slander us so long as the righteousness of God prevails and the name of the Lord is glorified? What does it matter if the enemy rails on us and lies to us? God, not his enemies, will issue the verdict on our lives. Therefore, David could sing praise to the Lord and so should we be able to do that. We as believers will often be unfairly criticized and even attacked by people, co-workers, family members, friends for our Christian faith. How should we respond when under assault? In those situations, we should run to God, who is our only fortress of safety. We should take refuge. <laughs> when accused, we, we have to search our own hearts to determine if the charges are true, if there are, if, if there are merits um, in the accusation, um, repentance must occur. Nothing would be worse than offending, defending one, one ourself if the accusation has validity. We need to say, God, these people are saying this. Is it true? Am I, am I guilty? Did I, did I miss something? God, show me. I want to repent. If the attack is unfounded and is for the sake of, of, of righteousness, we must leave the matter with the Lord. He's the righteous judge who will bring his justice to bear. We as believers must not retaliate against anybody that comes against us. Leave wrath to God. Not Don't try to do it on your own. I've done that in the past, and I have caused nothing but pain and hurt and destruction. Don't try to handle things yourself. God's our shield. He's worthy to be praised because he deflects the enemy's arrows and he protects his people. So you heard this song from two perspectives. If people are coming against you and it has validity, then repent. If people are coming against you and it's lies, take it to the Lord and leave it there. You don't try to fix it. You don't come against the people. You let God handle it and he always will. If you're innocent, he will handle it. He'll take care of it. You don't need to defend yourself. Don't need to defend yourself. God will defend you. I said, people are coming against you as they were David. Now take it one more step. If the enemy's coming against you, bringing lies and accusations, and you know they've been taken care of, let God take care of that too. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Once I was lost, now I'm found. <laughs> Once I was a sinner, and now I'm a saved sinner. I don't sin on purpose. I don't sin, you know, I don't, I don't live in sin, but sometimes I make mistakes. I blow it. I make wrong choices and he still forgives me, but take his forgiveness. Live in the truth of your relationship with God. Rebuke the enemy and move on in Jesus. I've just talked to so many people recently who have been just beaten up, beaten up by the enemy. No more, no more. We're not going to take that anymore. We're going to live in the truth of God's word. Father, thank you for giving us this psalm 
this song that David wrote, and he wrote it from his heart because when it's an experience that he was going through and he had, and he saw you as the answer. And Lord, we want to see you as the answer to every problem, every every situation. Maybe there's some listening right now, people are coming against them and it's it's false, it's not true. Lord, they choose to allow you to be their defense. This very moment, they're just gonna walk away and say, God, you handle it, I trust you. <laughs> Lord, if it's truthful, then they're gonna make a decision to repent and get it healed in repentance. We thank you, Lord. We're not gonna try to fix it ourselves when people come against us, Lord. Thank you. The enemy's attacking anybody listening right now and bringing false accusations. Live in the truth that who the Son has set free is free indeed. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You once were a scarlet, now you're white as snow. Receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow, okay? God bless you.